Denise Marley from The Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, July 7th to Saturday, July 13th. Okay, let's talk about last week. What a week. Yes, we entered into July and of course we kind of got the party started in a big way because we were building towards the new moon. Trying not to get ahead of myself here. However, moving into July, I think many of us felt a very different energy takeover. Of course, we're working with the vibration of seven this month, which, yeah, is going to affect relationship dynamics, but mostly it's going to allow us to find balance, peace, harmony in our lives once again. I know you're probably saying, well, I'm not seeing it yet. Well, stay tuned. If you haven't listened to the July energy forecast that I put out there, I am going to recommend you do so so that you understand what kind of month we're actually in for. I'll get into the rundowns of kind of plugging some of those particular guides and assistant tools in just a second. But for those wondering why suddenly this last week was just an absolute shit show, it's because we have a vibration change that we just dove into over this last week. Of course, we dove into July. On the second, we had back-to-back events. We had Neptune go retrograde, 29 degrees in Pisces energy, which is a very critical crisis degree, very karmic degree as well. And we had Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, move into Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. So we had to sit in that. We had to kind of acclimate to that as we were building towards the new moon in Cancer energy. Okay, so if you're with me Friday evening live in the chat, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Secondly, we just had the new moon in Cancer pop off about an hour, hour and a half ago, depending on where it is that you're at in the world. And so we're just sitting in it and that buildup, that intensity was definitely palpable. Again, many people have had a very rough week. And although I feel very bad that people have a rough week, It tells me that you all been holding on to things that have not been meant for you. If you have been absolutely rocked over the last week, I'll even give it the last two weeks. Please understand that this is the universe's way of shaking you up so that you will essentially release your hold on a lot of the aspects that you perceive as you're losing, as a punishment, as being taken away from you. If you've had a bumpy time, it's because we just entered into cancer season. That solstice gateway was karmically locking in the path, the timeline, the soul contracts that you are going to be working with and working on until the fall. So if anything got turbulent, if there were domestic situations, familial situations, job situations that popped off, please understand that this is the realignment needed in order to clear away those particular parts that your old version of self had created, clearing those away, providing a completion point so that we can essentially pivot, which this new moon in Cancer is providing us to do at this present moment. I'll talk about that in just a second. Pivot away from all of this crap and start kind of clearing the space, cleaning the slate to build something new. So we're very much in this new moon in Cancer energy. We will be for the next two to three days. Technically, the new moon cycle carries us all the way into this next month of energies until we have the new moon in Leo pop off in August. So we're going to be in this energy, but the potency of it definitely going to push us into our feels, push us into letting go, into releasing these particular aspects and chapters of our old lives over the next couple of days so that we can again get grounded, get stable, gain our footing, gain our bearings on what needs to change, what needs to transform, what we need to do, what we need to pursue, what we have to build and create for our futuristic realms. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a second. What do we got going on this week, you may ask? Well, Again, we're going to be in this new moon cancer energy for the next couple of days. We do have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, moving out of cancer energy, moving into Leo energy on the 11th. Again, listen to your July energy forecast. If you haven't already, download that cancer season e-guide. Again, getting ahead of myself, but do all of the things, okay? We are essentially sitting in this energy 
building towards the first quarter moon taking place in Libra energy on the 13th. Now, this is going to be a major, major pivot point as well. It's taking place at 22 degrees, which is a karmically divine number. Now, the first quarter moon of any lunar phase is a point of action, a point of choice, a point of decision. From the new moon, where things are ending, things are closing, things are being wrapped up, and in doing that, realizing what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to pursue, again, we have options and opportunities, choice points available to us that we're still going to maul over for essentially this next week. By the time we get to that first quarter moon, we are going to have an idea on what we need to do. Okay, the choice point is going to be illuminated. We are going to take on a different path, a different direction. At 22 degrees, it is divinely scripted for us to do just that. And in true cardinal fashion, because we are in cancer season, it is a cardinal season, which means that it's time to pivot, it's time to change paths, time to change directions. The Libra energy, also a cardinal energy, a cardinal air energy, is going to put in perspective what we have to do in order to find peace and harmony, to gain balance, grounding energies, especially where relationship dynamics pop off. But mostly, again, when I say relationships, everybody thinks romantic, I'm not even talking about romantic relationships. I'm talking about, A, the relationship that you have with yourself, because that kind of dictates and sets the tone for every other relationship that you have in your realm. But B, Relationships are interactions with the people, with the world around you. You have a relationship with the guy at the corner store. You have a relationship to the cashier at the supermarket. That is an energetic exchange. So try moving forward to think that when you hear relationship dynamics, that it's not just within the context of your personal relationships, of your romantic relationships. It is relationships in all forms. Now, granted, we came into this cancer season, we had a major shakeup, major wake up where relationship dyma- di- sorry, dynamics are concerned. The personal ones, the romantic ones, they fell apart. Things have been bumpy. The road moving forward isn't as clear as we would like. Why? Because many of us are still holding on to hope that we're going to figure this out, that we're going to reconcile, that we're going to make it work. When realistically speaking, you're beating a dead horse. Now, Does that sound fun? No. Does it sound like, you know, we're giving up? No, it does not. But we have to change our perspective here. The wants, needs, and desires that we have within our own damn selves, again, Venus, okay, especially in that cancer energy, we're realizing what we've been lacking. When Venus moves into the Leo energy, we're operating from the heart space, from the soul space, from our most raw, authentic space that we have available inside of us. Our affections are going to be bold and brave and courageous. We're going to take risks. We're going to put ourselves out there. We're not going to be timid. We're not going to walk on eggshells. We're not going to kind of keep our wants, needs, and desires to ourselves, especially where romantic relationships are concerned, because we know where that has gotten us. And it's gotten us in a point where we're disappointed. We're disappointed in ourselves for allowing ourselves to be treated in such a way. We're disappointed in the people that we've given a chance to treat us a certain way because they are not doing the best kind of jobs. Now, does this apply to everyone? Absolutely not. Does this mean that all romantic relationships are going through struggles right now? No, but I would kind of put my money on it that 90% are going through some sort of change and transformation. It would be unheard of that they weren't because, of course, we have to remember the North and South Node are very much on the Aries and Libra and Axis, which means that relationships have to fall apart in order for us to know thyself. Many of us in codependent relationships, many of us in relationship dynamics that are not supporting us to be an individual. Many of us need to be kind of broken down and broke up with in order to set ourselves free because that's not something that most people would choose for themselves. And so, you know, first quarter moon in Libra and energy, yes, is going to be a time of action and decision and that pivot point that we technically speaking are already making in our inner realm due to this new moon in Cancer reaching that 15th degree. Technically, it was at its peak potency at 14 degrees, but, you know, give it a couple of minutes. We're at that 15th degree, which means that we're halfway through the season and we're pivoting again, really pulling our energy 
from being too focused on the past, what it is that we wish would have happened, where it is that we didn't think we would be dealing with certain aspects. And now we're, we go, we're going to become a little bit more present, figuring out how to nurture ourselves back to a place of happiness and health and wellness and stability and security, all of those wonderful things. And in turn, now we start kind of focusing on what we need to do in the present moment, but also what we need to do in the present moment to support our future selves. Again, cancer energy, typically speaking, we're more attached to the past than we are to the future, but slowly but surely, we have some very positive aspects popping off over this next week to help put into perspective what it is that we have to be doing for our futuristic selves. Okay, so that was a little bit of a blurb and a half. Uh, let me cover a couple of things on my to-do list and then we're going to jump right back into the ranting and raving about the ascension symptoms and what it is that we're all kind of going through at this moment. So first of all, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below. I want to thank you for your love and support. However it is that you are showing it, however it is that you're choosing to show it, I want to thank you so much. I want to also thank those of you that have chosen to show that love and support in a financial donation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cannot tell you how appreciative I am of your generosity. It truly means the world to me. I also want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, whether it is to kind of review your free June Zodiac forecast now available to the public, or to even preview your July Zodiac forecast if you're not a paid member. But I especially want to thank those of you over on Patreon because I put out a new episode of Marley Rants over this last week. It's a little bit of a personal kind of blurb to kind of let y'all know what I've been going through. Um, I'm not going to go into it here on YouTube. Um, if you're interested, come over to Patreon. Basically what I'm getting at is the love and support, the amount of people that I have in my corner is just so amazing, so profound. I am super, super grateful to have as much love and support as I have in the community that we got going on here. Um, I was very open, very vulnerable, which is very fitting, saying that we are in cancer season, I would say, and very real, very raw, very in your face about the changes, the transformations that, of course, we're all going through. But I put my own kind of personal spin on it, trying to be as transparent as I possibly can be to not only kind of illuminate why it is that I've been going through or changing the things that I have, especially in the business context, but hopefully to help empower other people because we are all going through this major change in identity. And I am super, super grateful for every single one of you for all the love and support. I just wanted to give an extra little oomph, an extra little shout out to my Patreon subscribers. Y'all just hold space for me each and every single time and I cannot thank you enough. Okay, so a little bit of a plug that I gotta do for my own little business here. I am going to encourage you to download the moon guide. We're still in it. We're going to be in it for three days. So again, there's a lunar activity in that moon guide there for you. Just, you know, journal prompts to kind of get in alignment with this energy to realize what we're pivoting away from to help really kind of define what it is that you now want to move closer to what you want to do, what you want to pursue. The moon guide is there for your growth, for your evolution. That's where we do the shadow work. You got to do the work. Um, as I previously mentioned, the June Zodiac forecast is free and available to like open to the public over on my Patreon there. So if you're kind of curious on what those monthly Zodiac forecasts are all about and how you kind of aligned with the path that you should have been aligned with over the last month in June, definitely jump over to my Patreon as a free member. Listen to those particular forecasts just to get a grip on where it is that you're at right now. You can preview, I think it's like five minutes or something, um, the new July Zodiac forecast for my paid members. Even as a free member, you get to preview just a little chunk of that without actually having to pay for it. So again, another reason to kind of join the community over there on Patreon. Again, I'm going to recommend, you know, cancer season is not over yet. We are only halfway through it, believe it or not. And so the Cancer Season e-guide is there for your downloading pleasure as well. 
It's basically an energetic Bible to all of the energetic astro shifts that we are going through in cancer season, keeping you ahead of the game, aligned with the energies so that, again, it's better to kind of roll with the energies than be dragged through it. And the last thing that I want to talk about is that I totally forgot to mention this uh, last week entering into the new month. But of course, my booking calendar for July is now open and available on my website. Should you want to book an appointment with me of any kind, if you want to do the work, if you want a little bit of an energetic update on where it is that you're at and the options that you have available to you for growth and evolution at this particular juncture of your calendar, I would definitely recommend that you snag a spot. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's jump into some information, especially where ascension symptoms are concerned. So, first of all, just wanted to let you know that this week, we kick off the week with the moon in Leo. We close the week off with the moon in Libra. Now, that's only three signs. And typically speaking, sometimes, you know, depending on the, I'm going to say energy, the aspects, the duration of the voids that the moon goes in when switching signs. Sometimes we can get like four different signs out of a week. Sometimes we're at that three mark. And right now we're in that three mark. But let's talk about the three energies that we are going to emotionally speaking, be anchored and rooted into this week. So we start off with the moon and Leo. That's going to help dry us up from a lot of the emotion that we've been sitting in. Yes, we're still in cancer season. Yes, there's still a lot to process. Yes, there's still a lot to feel in order to heal. But the main oomph of that energy is now kind of over. Meaning that new moon in cancer that we're just sitting in as of right now, Friday evening here, that is the pivot point. That is the ending point of crying over spilt milk, of crying over situations that have popped off. Um, and pivoting towards, again, being more focused on what we have to do to make major changes for our future selves. The emotional confusion is slowly but surely coming to an end. The emotional rawness, the vulnerability, the weakness that we have been perceiving within ourselves, that is coming to an end. The moon in the Leo energy is kind of restoring our confidence, our faith within ourselves, it's boosting our self-esteem. It's also taking us out of the introverted energy that we were in and kind of making us come out into the world, kind of sharing ourselves with the world around us, with the people around us in a bigger, better way than we have since we entered into cancer season. Again, we're still in cancer season. There's still a lot of introvertedness that we have to do in order to analyze our inner realm of emotion. Um, but for the most part, the moon in Leo invites us out to play. We need to be playful. We need to have fun. We need to be bold. We need to be brave. We need to have courage in order to do all of the hard things that just happen to be the right things in order for us to grow, in order for us to evolve. So, you know, we are going to have some major heart activations here this week. A lot of that starts with the moon in Leo. A lot of it gets even more amplified with Venus moving into Leo energy. Again, there's going to be a flashback to August and September of 2023. And that's essentially when Venus was retrograde in that Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, when she had her meltdown, when she had her breakdown, when she basically essentially said that the version of self, the part, the role that she was playing up until that particular juncture was for everybody else. It wasn't authentic. It wasn't real. It wasn't something that she needed to do for her, for herself. It was something she was doing for other people. That was essentially the time frame that this new version of self that we just started playing with here in the physical realm got born. We took our sweet Jesus time. It took until I'm going to say the new moon in Scorpio. So like November ish of 2023 to even realize the major change, the major transformation that we were having in our inner realm, where we were realizing that the version of self that we were playing, the role that we were playing was coming to an end. And we had to kind of revamp the role in which we wanted to play for our future selves. That's where relationships fell apart. That's where new wants, needs, and desires got realized. That's where we realized what we had to do in our physical realm in order to create a realm and reality that not only looked good, but that felt good as well. It wasn't until this year, January 2024, 
the new moon and Capricorn energy that we actually brought the structure of this identity, this, this new foundation of the version of self out to play. And it really wasn't until we entered into that eclipse season that we had the new moon, solar eclipse and Aries energy that was in April. That's where we got to choose the version of self that we were actually anchoring in. We got to experiment with it from January up until April. And then from April until now, we've been refining this new version of self, this new identity. And so, yes, we're going to have a lot of flashbacks this week to how much we've grown, how much we've changed, how much we've transformed. For many people, we're still in cancer season. It's going to be a sad story. It's going to be like, oh, oh, last, you know, summertime last year, I fell in love and now I just broke up with them and I thought they were my forever or, oh, I jumped into a brand new job that this time last year and I thought it was going to be my dream job and it turned out to be the job from hell. All of these reflective points are putting into perspective how far we've come. It's also putting into perspective the choices that our ego self chooses for us that our higher self is like, no, 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 not a good fit, not a good choice, not a good vibe. No, we're not doing that. Get rid of it. And again, when the karmic cycles change, around the solstice energies and the equinox energies, that's when we see the endings and the closures take place. That's why so many people are in a state of discombobulation right now because the karmic chapter that just got closed as we entered into the solstice gateway has been very transformative in not the nicest ways. It's been a change. It's been a disruption. It's been an unexpected turn of events in not the most favorable observation from the egoic standpoint. If you're able to align with the higher self and see that anything that is being removed out of your life right now is because it was not supporting and encouraging who it is that you are destined to be and to become. I mean, when you understand the karmic chapter, the karmic life lesson, it makes it a lot easier to kind of come to a term of acceptance with. And so, you know, once Venus moves into that Leo energy here on the 11th, we are definitely going to have a major change of heart. And we are going to tap into a new level of self-confidence and self-esteem where we're going to put ourselves out into the world in ways in which we've been hesitant to do. So back to my, you know, original point here. The moon, when it moves into the Virgo energy, which of course comes after the Leo energy, the Virgo energy is a mutable earth sign ruled over by the mental plane, by Mercury. And so the Vir the whole point of the moon in Virgo is to identify the problem in order for us to fix it, to analyze our inner realm of emotion in order to realize what we have to let go of, what we have to close the door on, what we have to embrace and embody and double down on in order to actually make a change. The Virgo energy is a healing energy, but it affects our mind. What we focus on is what we manifest. So we're going to have to take a good look at our inner narrative. And because we're kind of pivoting because of the halfway point of cancer season, we're pivoting out of the whiny, crying victimhood mentality, the wah, 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 into the, okay, it is what it is. Let's build something new. Let's nurture myself back to a place of health and wellness. What can I do for my futuristic self? Because we're kind of in that mentality, the moon and Virgo energy is going to help us process that inner dialogue process, all that has changed, all that is transformed, all that has transpired and put us in a situation to be highly critical, especially with the inner realm, our current disposition of thoughts, ideas, and emotion on what it is that we've been too fixated on, what it is that we have been creating in our physical realm that we would rather not experience and where it is that we have to flip the script into something more encouraging, something more positive. The Virgo energy is the fixer, is the healer, is the solver of the Zodiac and is attempting to heal the physical body, the physical realm due to the mental plane, what we're focused on, what we're kind of pouring time, energy and attention into, whether that be good or bad. If your physical realm is an absolute shit show right now, take a good look at what it is that you can let, allow to consume your mind. Take a good look at the inner dialogue, your inner narrative, how it is that you talk to yourself, what it is that you focus on, because you're essentially creating the physical realm around you. It's merely a materialized projection of the thoughts, the ideas, the energy that you allow to consume your mind. 
So, you know, we have a lot of power that many of us are not tapping into, that we should be tapping into, especially being in the year of eight, pushing us into our creator abilities. We got to get a grip on the mental plane first and foremost. And the Virgo energy helps us to kind of examine our emotional disposition and what it is that we could change in our mental plane in order to get us out of that emotional funk. So after the processing takes place, we see the moon move into the Libra energy, and that's going to set us up for that first quarter moon popping off at 22 degrees. But the moon in Libra energy is attempting to find balance in the realizations that we had while the moon was in Virgo energy. So we process, we criticize, we analyze, we figure out what needs to stay or needs to go. We attempt to do so. And especially because that first quarter moon is going to put us in an action point, a decision point, a choice point. That's when we actually take action upon flipping the script in our mental plane, flipping the way that we communicate, flipping the way that we focus our energies on what it is that we actually want to build and create in our lives instead of focused on the problematic areas that, of course, is just manifesting more problematic areas. Again, when you fix when you fixate on all the things that are wrong, you're only going to create more circumstances in your physical realm to emphasize all of that wrongness. So let me put it to you this way. We all have the option and opportunity to focus on what we're quote unquote losing. OK, but if you were to instead adopt the narrative on what it is that you're actually making room for, suddenly that becomes an exciting challenge. Suddenly that becomes an empowerment energy. You're not losing anything. You're making space for something new. Right. You don't. Well, I shouldn't say you don't, because I know many people when they're going through the purge of their closet and getting rid of some of you know their clothing, it is a very sad thing. You are considering it has a loss of the clothes that you don't fit into or the style that you don't identify with or whatever the case may be. But uh, let's just, you know, assume that it wasn't a sad thing. When you declutter your life, when you get rid of the junk, are you really losing it or are you making space for something new? It's up to you. You get to decide the narrative, the perspective, the dialogue that you are choosing for thyself. And so having the moon kind of push us into that Libra energy, we are going to find peace in the certain terms of acceptance that we're having a hard time swallowing the pill of right now. We are going to find compromise in the give and take, the loss and the gain, the, the you know, endings and the beginnings. We're going to find peace in that. We're going to find balance in our emotional realm. We're going to figure out what we need to be doing for us while still kind of honoring our our commitments to other people. We're going to find the sweet spot once again. So I think it's just really empowering. I would say very reassuring to take a good look at the moon phase in which we're going to be experiencing throughout the course of the week, because that kind of illuminates, if you will, the high highs and the potential low lows. But it's also giving you a sense of what it is that we're going to feel accomplished in towards the end of the week. And that is going to be no longer, and it's an oxymoronic thing here because Libra and energy is the most indecisive energy that you could possibly have. So the flip-flopping that we have been doing, it's very interesting because the first quarter moon in Libra and energy and the most indecisive energy that you could possibly sit in in that zodiac is actually going to push us into making a decision, push us into a point of action, putting us in a situation to actually decide. And at a 22 degree, you know that it is karmically speaking, divinely what needs to happen in order to put you on the path that you need to be on for the events to come. So I'm going to take a little bit of a, a moment to kind of rant and explain about this. If you are destined to meet a certain person, because again, before we all come into this earth plane, there are certain agreements that we make with other people, especially key role players in our evolution, in our, in our growth. If you're supposed to be meeting a certain person, and although, you know, the timeline is a little bit wiggly from our spirit realm to our physical realm, if you're supposed to be meeting a certain person, let's say by Christmas this year, well, I mean, 
you're going to have to get rid of the person that you're currently consumed with. And how do we do that? Well, we have the universe pop off situations that help remove those particular people from your life to give you the time, the energy, the space to get to know yourself again, to build yourself back up so that you are the vibration and frequency that you need to be in order to be a vibratory match for the person that you've already agreed that you will meet at a certain juncture in a certain timeline. So people that are experiencing these quote unquote losses right now, y'all are just so fixated on what your ego had planned for you, not realizing that your higher self has bigger plans than you could ever even understand, let alone imagine. And so a lot of the reason of why when we enter into equinox energy and solstice energy, because they are the karmic reset, so to speak, that's when shit hits the fan. That's when things pop off. If you are having some major life crises and situations pop off right now, that is a super good indicator that you're about to level up in a big way and be put in the path that your higher self needs you to be put upon for eclipse season that we are going to be entering into in the fall. And so again, if your life is falling apart, you should be excited because it is about to fall together in a major, major way. Okay, so I kind of talked about the pivot. Um, we are going to become a little bit more future focused over this next week. And especially once Venus gets into that Leo energy and we're, we're really, really in tune with new wants, needs, and desires for ourselves, that is where there's going to be a major shift in our mood and in our attitude. That is when we are going to definitely bust out of this little shell that we've all found ourselves in. And we're going to just kind of throw caution to the wind and say, screw it. I'm going to try it. I got nothing to lose. And that is where we take the major risks. That's where we put ourselves out there in ways that we normally hesitate to do. That is where we make some serious advancements on really kind of stabilizing in our emotional realm once again. So that pivot has already begun. We're at that 15th degree in Cancer energy. We're pivoting. And then Venus moves into Leo energy. We're pivoting. And then we reach that first quarter moon in Libra energy. That is the major pivot that catapults us in a new path, in a new direction. So with that pivot, we are going to feel a major change in our headspace, in our heart space, in our spiritual disposition, in our physical realm. And that is going to have a major effect on the physical symptoms that we are going to feel from the energy fluctuating as well. This is where the ascension symptoms come to life. I don't know about y'all, but my sleep patterns have changed for the better. Thank goodness. I think if you were tapping into last week's forecast, you would know that I was awake for like a week straight. And that is just a recipe for disaster. And I know many people it's really struggling with that sleep state. Um, this past week, there's been a major change in my sleep state. Now I've gone from being awake for a week to literally not being able to wake up. I'm sleeping full nights, but I'm sleeping so deeply, so, so comfortably that I'm having a hard time getting up in the morning, having a hard time getting my ass in gear. Now I know we're in a water season and at times it does feel like we're 500 pounds trying to run underwater, especially when you're trying to get the physical body going. Um, but that sleep state, I don't know, drop me a line in the chat. If you're with me in the chat, if you're catching the replay, drop me a line in the comments. Has your sleep changed for the better or for the worst? I'm hoping that we're all erring on the side of better. But with that sleep change comes, again, the change in the dream landscape. Now, my dreams have been very, very strange. We're, we're essentially... I'll try to explain it the best way that I understand it to be. The cancer energy, because it is the core of our emotional vulnerabilities, because our sleep state is the unconscious realm, because our dreams are a piecing together of the concepts that our waking selves are unable to process from the proper observational point there's a lot of really messed up dream content that is triggering and activating some deep seated childhood wounds and relationship wounds, I would say familial wounds that may not make very good sense in the dreamscape, but the feeling is there. So maybe you are dreaming that you're with someone that you were never with, 
or maybe you are dreaming of your family growing up in a house that you technically have no recollection of in your dreamscape. Whichever way the details aren't lining up, that's really not what's important. The underlying importance is the feeling, the overall topic and theme. And I would say, not that I'm a betting girl, but if I was, I would say that a lot of the dream content right now, if you could kind of summarize it in a topic and a theme, it would be vulnerability. And that's where cancer season highlights where we see weakness in our vulnerability, but where it is that we need to find strength in our vulnerability, our innocence, that childhood innocence that of course, you know, cancer energy is all about the inner child wounds just as much as it is about the mother role because it's nurturing where it is that we were not nurtured, who it is that we did or did not feel safe with. There's an element of safety and security that pops up in cancer season. And I feel like many people are experiencing dream content right now to kind of bang those particular topics and themes home. And it can be very sobering. It can be very sensitive, very sombering too, and can leave you kind of feeling lonely disconnected and detached when you wake up. So I'm curious to see, let's do like a little bit of a dream poll here, a sleep poll and a dream poll. Has your sleep changed? And if it has, is it better or worse? And has your dream content changed? And do you feel like it is essentially pressurizing you to unpack a lot of the unconscious pain and trauma wounds that you obviously are not addressing well enough or strongly enough in your waking life? And do you identify, has your dream content been surrounding safety and security, those vulnerable feelings? Have you been waking up feeling, you know, emotionally alone and detached here in the physical realm in comparison to the closeness, the intimacy, the attachment that you're experiencing in your dreamscape? That'll be very interesting to kind of review. Uh, as the week gets going here and we have more people kind of chime in with that major change and pivot point that's going on in our mental plane, in our emotions, and of course, in our physical realms as well. Now, because we are pivoting there as well, we're going to feel those energy shifts due to the temperature fluctuation that's going to be taking place here this week. I would say that many of us are kind of on the cold side, if you will, even if it's warm where you're at. I know like we're, you know, we're in the, I'm not gonna say middle of summer here in Canada, but we're definitely in the warmer temperatures and I'm frozen. I'm walking around like a weirdo while everybody else is out in, you know, t-shirt and shorts and just having the best type of sweaty summertime weather. And I'm like fully clothed over here. Uh, I put socks on the other day because my feet were literally freezing. Um, and again, we are in a water season. We have been totally submerged in this water energy now for a couple of weeks. And we are essentially, you know, wanting to get out of this ocean of emotion and we want to kind of head towards land. We will hit land here in a couple of weeks. And once we hit that land, the sun is just going to scorch us right to death because the sun moves in his rulership and Leo energy and that dries us up and dries us off of all of this wetness, this emotion, this uh, coldness that many of us are sitting in. The temperature fluctuation in our physical body is a good indicator on where the energy is kind of crashing upon us, where it is moving through our physical bodies, where it is free flowing in some meridian channels and where it's getting kind of clogged up, backed up in other parts of our meridian channels as well. Um, the temperature fluctuations, I would say you're mostly cold during the day and you're running hot at night. A lot of cold sweats taking place at night with that change in sleep and that change in dreamscape as well. So I know that I have been super nauseous, super stomach sick, hungry one minute, ready to puke the next. I think other people are as well. I know just from my clients, um, they're also experiencing this like really weird sensation. Let me also just remind you that cancer energy does kind of have a connection to the stomach. And of course, um, there's a lot of nerves in our digestive system. And when we are worried and when we are scared and when we are fearful and when we're sad, um, that really has an impact on how our digestive system is functioning. 
because we are at a pivot point, I do think we're going to move out of the C sickness type of disposition and we are going to become a little bit more stabilized in our digestive system. But right now, uh, the new moon energy that we're in, I don't know too many people that are super hungry and that eat whatever they're craving and then feel satisfied with it and then don't feel like puking it up later, okay? The, the emotional waves are choppy. And with that, uh, just as you feel content by eating something, that something is wanna kinda come back up and out to play. I hope that this passes semi-quickly, um, but nonetheless, we just have to, again, learn to ride the wave. So I talked about the heart activations that are likely going to take place. And again, just a reminder, our heart activation can be emotional, can be a flashback, can be emotions coming to the surface in order for a purge or release to take place. Could be indigestion. It could be rapid heart. Uh, maybe the beats of your hearts are changing. Maybe, you know, you feel like there's an air bubble around your heart. Maybe you're having... Um, gas bubbles. It could be a lot of different signs and symptoms, but those all in the chest area are heart activations. But we also have solar plexus activations because again, we're pivoting out of kind of the attachments of the old pain trauma wounds and we are starting to pivot. Think about, you know, nurturing ourselves back to a place of health and wellness about for our future selves. And so our solar plexus that sits right below our rib cage, that's going to be popping off as well. And that can create heartburn, can create acid reflux, can create bubble gut situation as well. I feel like many of us are going to go through the hiccup stage this week, just random hiccup fits for no reason. Just think of yourself out in the ocean, you're gagging on some of the water that you're swallowing by accident. That got to go somewhere. The breathing techniques that we should be in control of, the breath work. We haven't been spending as much time, energy, and attention on our breath work as we should. And therefore, our diaphragm is out of whack. Thus, hiccups in order to get back into alignment. So I think many of us are going to be with the hiccups, the burping, the gas, the bubble guts, you know, all of the lovely things that get triggered and activated with the solar plexus activation as well. I feel like we're going through this pivot point, which is almost like a detox point. It's like a cleansing point. But with the detox and cleansing, first of all, comes frequent trips to the bathroom. But I think that we're ready to essentially let go of the past, which means that we're ready to let go of some shit, literally speaking. Um, but I also think that the bathroom breaks as far as, you know, pee breaks are concerned are going to become more frequent. We have a lot of water that we have to kind of get out of our systems, if you will. We have a lot of emotions that we have to disperse as well. Thus, the detox is going to lead to, again, more frequent bathroom trips. Here's the thing. We just went through the breakdown. We're not quite in the breakthrough, but when the breakthrough energy happens, and I'm going to say like Tuesday-ish, um, we're going to see a major change in our physical bodies as well. And I feel like that's when literally the floodgates are going to open on either end and we are going to see a cleansing absolutely take place. Just consider the fact that the absolute materialistic waste that your body processes also holds a lot of emotion. And so when you're ready to let go of a certain emotion, you're going to realize that your physical body is now producing more, let's call it detox material for you to pass, for you to let go of, for you to release. Again, more bathroom trips. Um, I want to talk about the fact that the nervous system so our central nervous system is basically the emotional regulation and the energetic regulation of our physical bodies. And especially because we have some pretty pivotal aspects popping off here this week. Not that I want to go into a full rundown, but on Sunday, um, we are actually going to have Mercury and Uranus come together, which is the highest form of our intellect and the lower form of our intellect, which opens us up to new perspectives and new ways of doing things, which... Uranian energy is a direct hit to our central nervous system. Monday, for example, Venus is going to sextile Uranus. So this is, again, a sudden shift, a pivot point, an awakening, if you will, of certain emotions, certain wants, needs, and desires. We do have a moon day coming up on Tuesday. So again, 
an emotional refinement kind of day. But basically what I'm getting at here is there's a lot of Uranian energy coming at us this week, which helps us to kind of see new paths, new directions, new epiphanies, new insights. But the Uranian energy is also a double doozy to our central nervous system. And our central nervous system is going through an activation point because, of course, we're growing, we're expanding, we're evolving. And when we kind of anchor into the bossed up version of self, the parameters in our central nervous system change as well. Our sensory input program is kind of being heightened. And because of that, sight, smells, touch, you know, the whole five senses are being activated in a new way. We are in cancer season. We're hypersensitive, especially to the world, to the emotion, to the energies that surround us. And when our central nervous system gets a zap from the Uranian energy to kind of boss up, to expand our minds, to expand our options and opportunities, the boundaries in which we've been operating in, that changes as well. And that's where we see different versions of light spectrums, where we see the glimmers of the matrix threads, where we see new colored orbs, where we see glimmers, often the peripherals of our sight and of our vision. It's when we become a little bit more heightened in our sensory experience, which means smells. Smells are going to be stronger. They may be favorable and really make your mouth water and make you crave something, or they could totally turn you off to something that was once enjoyable. It could go either way. Taste, you know, our taste buds are just a poppin. Speaking about taste, we actually might have that mouth film come back this week. May actually feel like you have like morning breath or bad breath pretty much all day. You can't really cleanse that palate, so to speak. Um, I want you to think about if you've ever just gone on a water fast. So when you just drink water, and again, I'm, I'm bringing up water because we are in cancer season. We are in a water season, so we're bringing in a lot more water. Um, we are puffy, we are swollen, we are bloated, all of those things. We are cold. That whole, the whole being in the middle of the ocean analogy is quite the explanation for a lot of the symptoms that we are currently experiencing. But when you're basically just drinking water, your mouth gets really weird, like it, it tastes funny. And it's very interesting to know that because we're having this central nervous system blast, we're basically we're leveling up to new sensory input programming, that all of our five senses are going to be enhanced for better or for worse. It doesn't really matter. It's just reaching a new level of operation, if you will. But that film mouth, those fuzzy sweaters on our teeth that, you know, you just take a gulp of water, but yet your tongue is dry. You got the pasties, if you will. That's likely going to be sticking around here all week. Um, and with that, the sniffles. Now, we don't really have a cold. We don't have allergies. Um, there's not a huge congestion taking place in our headspace. But as you know, when you swim for long enough, the nose starts running and the clear snot starts coming and we have the sniffles. That will be taking place for the better part of this week as well. So guys, I'm just checking my list here. I think that's everything that I really wanted to talk about. Um, those are the major changes, the major focuses on the energy manifestations here this week. Of course, may I just remind you that the absolute standard, the, binum, the minimum bare basic standard of the ascension symptoms, which is cold and flu-like symptoms, having headaches, head pressure, having emotional breakdowns, therefore breakthroughs, the achiness, the pains in your physical body, especially where bones are cracking and feeling a little bit rigid with each other. All of that is pretty standard. All of that is just stuff that I'm just not going to repeat on a weekly basis. But just know that if you're feeling that achiness, that cold like flu like sensation, that is very much ascension symptoms as well. I like to focus on the, I'm going to say special ones, the ones that are requiring more energy and attention than the normal ones do. And of course, with some of the energy fluctuations that are going to be taking place this week, we just have to keep our eye on the new changes manifesting in our physical bodies, in our physical form. So guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I want to thank you for showing up, not just for me, but for yourself. 
I hope that this new moon in Cancer, yes, breaks you down to be more real and raw and vulnerable with yourself on what you want, what you need, what you desire for your physical world, for your realm, for your reality. But then I also hope that you really tap into that pivot energy and you start building yourself up in a much better way. Of course, I'm cheering you on. I'm sending you so much love and we'll talk to you soon.